Yo, what's really good my people, Kiwami Games here, back at it with another video for you guys, and today we are on our road to Masters, and we're using none other than Trap Tricks. So, as you can see, we are currently in Diamond 2, and we have a 4 game winning streak. Now, for you guys today, I have a lot of crazy back and forth, fun, interactive duels that I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy, so... I'm not going to make this intro too long, let's just, just hop right into the replays and as always I will go over the uh, deck at the end of the video going card by card, but let's just jump right into it. Alright my people, so for our first replay we're going to go up against Tillman's Castira and I really wanted to show this video because, well rather this duel because this is going to be like a perfect, perfect opportunity to show you how well the deck can perform in the grind game, how well it can perform going second, because one of the downfalls to the deck is that it can struggle going second. So here we're going to go, you know, up against Tillamans, and they're going to pop off. So they have the Fenrir, they're going to go into the Kick Halos, they're going to get their Sullyak. All right, then the Kick Halo is going to activate, getting their Tillaman Castira, so they're going to be able to mill some more cards. So from here they get to mill what is it, about five from the KK lows and then like three from the Tailorman Castira. So they mill the screen, the screen is gonna activate. You know, typical Tailorman stuff. So this duo is actually quite long. I mean we've had a lot of back and forth interaction, so I'm gonna fast forward a little bit just so that we can save a little bit of time. Alright, so now it's back to us so now we're gonna also gonna get hit with max c bro so let's do this so we're gonna normal summon put he's gonna activate the meta noise so the meta noise is now gonna flip my card face down but lucky for us it doesn't negate and then he's gonna mill a sharon so we're gonna get our field spell then the sharon is gonna activate so he's going to put back the rhino heart and the sharon he's gonna make another kk lose then that's going to activate the field spell. Field spell is going to pop my Pudica. Then the KK Lows is going to recycle its effect. You know, getting another Tillamon card. Alright, so we activate the field spell. So the field spell is going to allow us to do a second normal summon. Alright, then he's going to activate his... What is it called again? The Sullyek. So the Sullyek is going to negate my Pudica, but it's all good. So now we're going to go into our Sarah. And then we're going to set two and pass turn. That's all we can do. All right. Then he's going to activate the Fenrir. Fenrir is going to search for the Unicorn. Okay. Then he's going to activate the Jet Synchron. Special summon itself. I'm going to hit him with the Torrential Tribute. He just stepped on the line mine. We're going to blow up his whole shit. All right. That's going to trigger the uh, Tillamay Castira. That's also going to trigger the Rule Kalos. I'm going to activate the Sarah. I'm going to activate the Arachno Kampa. Alright, and because a trap card was used, then my Sarah is going to be able to special summon a trap trick monster. So, I'm going to special summon Mermelo. So, now Mermelo is going to allow me to pop one of his spell of trap cards. So, I'm going to target his field spell. Alright, and then now since one of my trap tricks monster activated its effect, I can activate Sarah once again. He's going to activate the Soliac, trying to negate the Sarah, but the Sarah is unaffected by trap cards. So now I'm going to set uh, Grave Digger's Trap Hole, and then I'm going to pop his Field Spell. Then he's going to activate the Destrudo, paying half of his life points to Special Summon itself. Then he's going to mill a whole bunch of cards. Then he's going to bring back the Rhino Heart. Rhino Heart is going to mill the Sharon. Sharon is going to pop off using the Kick Halos and the Rhino Heart. They're going to go into the none other than the Kaleido Heart. Bring that bad boy out here. Okay, then he's going to target my Floodgate Trap Hole, so I'm going to activate it. Flipping down his Kaleido Heart. Alright, and then here my opponent, he's going to attack. And then this right here kind of lets me know he doesn't know what my deck does. Because he's going to attack into three different monsters while I have my Steel Spell. Knowing that they're all going to be protected from destruction the first time that they're attacked to. So this right here kind of lets me know that he's probably not as smart as I thought he would be. 
Okay, so now he goes into the uh, Time Thief or Doer. Then he's going to activate the Fairy Tail Snow, banishing a whole bunch of cards so that it can special summon itself. And then he's going to make a Baguska. And I'm cool with that. I'm like, all right, we can play under Baguska. It's all good to me, homie. Okay, so we join to Holoteo. I'm going to normal summon my Trap Tricks. Then using the Mermelo and the Mantis, we're going to go into our Calario. Okay, then with the Calaria and the Arachnocampa, I'm going to go into Adipus. Okay, now with Adipus, has a special effect that you can target face-up cards your opponent controls up to the number of insect and plant monsters you control. And then you can negate their effects. And then you can banish one normal trap from your graveyard. And if you do, you can destroy one of those targeted monsters. So I'm going to negate the Time Teeth for Duel and I'm going to negate the Rukalos. And then I'm going to pop the Rukalos. And then I'm going to search for the Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. And then we're going to smack him and smack the Time Thief Redoer. And we're going to keep the Baguska because, like I said, I can play under the Baguska. I don't know about him. <laughs> Alright, so now he's going to try to attack my Sarah. I'm going to activate Holotea so that I can special summon the Pudica. Alright, and then from here he's going to make a Zeus. Okay, then he's going to activate the Zeus, but that's going to trigger my Trap Hole. So whenever a Special Summon Monster activates effect, I am able to negate it. And then if I can negate it, I can destroy it. So we get rid of the Zeus. Now he's going to Special Summon the Unicorn. Unicorn is going to get him the Birth. Okay, he's going to activate the Birth. And then he's going to Special Summon the Fenrir back onto the field. And then with these two monsters, he's going to go and make a Big Eye. Alright, and then with the big eye, he's going to steal my Adipus. And then he's going to negate my field spell. And then he's going to pop my field spell with my own monster. Crazy. So we draw into another Floodgate Trap Hole. So with these two monsters, we're going to make our Pinguicola. Alright, then he's going to activate the Fairy Tail Snow. So that it can special summon itself back onto the field. That's going to trigger my Grave Digger's Trap Hole. But the Fairy Tail Snow is not once per turn, so he's going to be able to banish a whole bunch of cards again. So now the Fairy Tail Snow is going to get negated the first time. But its second effect is not going to get negated, so he's still going to be able to flip down my Pinguicola. And then since a Trap Trick Monster activated its effect, that's going to trigger my Sarah. So I can special summon uh, Dianea. So Dianea is going to recycle my Grave Digger's Trap Hole. Okay, now I activate Holotea, discarding my Floodgate Trap Hole, and with these two monsters, I'm going to make now my own Time Thief Redoer. Okay, and since I made Time Thief Redoer with a Trap Card, I'm able to now spin back one of his cards. So I'm going to spin back the Birth, because I don't want the Birth to resurrect any of his um, Castera monsters. Okay, then I'm going to steal one of his cards. We steal a, trap, a triple attack this talent. He's going to activate the birth. I'm going to activate the Holotea. Special summoning the man, the Mermelo from my graveyard. So now the Mermelo is going to be able to pop his Castera birth. And again, I want to get rid of that because the birth can be troublesome. He can resurrect any of his um, Castera monsters. Then he's going to crash into my Sarah. Then he's going to crash into my Pinguicola. Alright, then we draw a Marmello. I'm going to steal a Rhino Heart. Okay, so we know more Marmello. Marmello is going to search for another Holotail. Okay, then with the one Marmello, we're going to make our Sarah. Sarah is a key card in this deck, if you didn't know. Then we're going to banish the Holotail, special summoning our Adipus back onto the field. Okay, now that's also going to give... Once again, we're going to be able to negate all of his cards and then we're going to be able to pop and that's how you do it bro now tell me that was not a crazy crazy interactive fun back and forth game but i hope that this duel right here can show you just how well trap tricks can perform even in the grind game while going second under maxi against cash theory tillaments like crazy bro but that's nothing, man. We have so much, so much craziness. Let's just keep it moving. All right, my beautiful people. Now, for our next replay, we're going to go up against one of the best decks in the game. 
our nemesis, none other than Labyrinth. And once again, we're going to go second. Okay, so he's going to special summon the Fenrir. Fenrir is going to search for the second Fenrir. Okay, then he's going to normal summon the Ash Blossom, which I'm not sure what was the whole point of that, but... Oh, and there it is. So he's going to activate Big Welcome Labyrinth, and he's going to spin back the Ash Blossom to his hand. And using the Lady, he's going to be able to pop my Mermelo. Okay, so we sum normal summon Vesicolo. Vesicolo is going to go into our Trap Trick Sarah. All right. And then since he activated the Lady, we can special summon our Kurikara. Then using Kurikara, we're going to smack the Fenrir. So now we can activate our monster effects without worrying about our cards being banished. Alright, then he's going to activate the Ash Blossom negating my Sarah. Alright, so that's okay. I can live with that because now I can banish Vesicolo from my graveyard so that I can bring back my Chain Hole. That's going to trigger the Sarah. so I'm going to set a Floodgate and I'm going to set Torrental Tribute. And then I'm also going to steal his Lady Labyrinth. But he actually has a Magnum Hut, and I thought this was interesting, so he much rather banish his one of Lady instead of giving it to me. And then now he's also going to activate the Eradicator Virus, so all of my trap cards are just done. And then any trap card that I draw into is just going to get popped, so this is not looking good for me at all against Labyrinth. To not, to not be able to use my trap cards, yeah. Alright, then he's gonna smack my Sarah. Alright, and let's see what we draw into. We draw into Draw and Lockbird. Alright, and then with these two monsters, we're gonna go into our Ulsa. Okay, then we're gonna activate the Ulsa and we're gonna steal his Fenrir. But he's got the big Welcome Labyrinth, so he's gonna activate it. Alright, he's gonna special summon the Ariana. And then he's going to send the Druid's one back to his hand because he doesn't want me to banish it. Okay, then he's going to search for the Lady. I'm going to banish the Ariana. I'm going to activate my Fenrir, searching for my Fenrir. Okay, then he's going to activate the Lady, special summoning itself. Alright, and then that's all we wrote. Okay, then he's going to activate the Big Welcome, so he's going to target his own Lady. So that he can special summon his Fenrir. So he's going to activate the Fenrir. Banishing his own Fenrir. And he's going to activate the Lady. Once again special summoning is just like. Bro it's just like. <laughs> materials for days. Like resources for days. So since he added a card to his hand. I can activate Draw and Lockbird. Now I'm going to banish my Holotea. Special summoning the Mermelo. The Mermelo is going to pop that back row. So we're going to pop his Welcome Labyrinth. Alright we draw into Arachnocampa. Okay, so using our Mermelo, we're going to make our Sarah. Alright, and then with these two monsters, we're going to go into our Oedipus. Alright, and then now I can attack his Fenrir. He's going to try to spin back my Oedipus with the big welcome from the graveyard, but Oedipus is unaffected by trap cards. And then now we're going to negate his uh, Lady. And now we're going to special summon our Arachnocampa. I'm going to banish the Torrental Tribute so that I can pop his card. And then here he's going to banish his Lady to special summon the Druid's Worm. And here I kind of misplayed. I should have put Arachnocampa in attack mode because, you know, the Oedipus gives your monsters a thousand attack. Okay, then he's going to attack into my Oedipus so that he can get rid of it. Alright, now we got an open field so we can special summon our Fenrir. But, he's gonna give up bro. So look at that. We won second against arguably the best trap deck in the game. He hit me with the Eradicator Virus, getting rid of all of my trap cards. And we still put an end to this fool, baby. Do not sleep on trap tricks, baby. Do not sleep on my deck. Alright, my people. Now for our next replay, we're gonna go up against another great deck in the whole game. Which is gonna be Math Mech. And once again, my people, we are going to go second. But we got the Maxi, so I'm going to activate it in the standby phase. He's going to activate Sign and Mining. And here, bro, he fucked up. He's going <laughs> to... 
He's gonna mill the red reboot, bro. Once I saw that, I was like, oh, yes, man. I, I got him beat. So I know my summon Mantis. Mantis is gonna search for the Arachno Campo. He's gonna activate Drone and Lockbird. We don't care about Drone and Lockbird. We can play through that. Okay, so we're gonna go into our Sarah. And the reason why we can play through Drone and Lockbird is because Sarah does not add. She sets to the field. So Drone and Lockbird does not do anything to us at all. Okay, so we're gonna activate Holotea. Holotea is gonna special summon Dianea. Dianea is gonna recycle my Trap Hole Nightmare. He's gonna hit me with the Nibiru. So he's gonna trivia away my whole entire existence. All right, and then we set infinite impermanence, and we said I would trap whole nightmare, and that's all we wrote. Okay, I'm gonna activate Holotea to special summon him back my Sarah, but he's got the Ghost Bell. So a lot of Mathmech players have been using the Ghost Bell now since their diameter is gonna go to one. They need something to prevent the call by the grave and the beast deals. Okay, so he's gonna activate the circular, send in the Sigma. Sigma is going to special summon itself, the diameter, the circular is going to try to search for the super factorial, but I'm going to negate that with the infinite of permanence. Alright, now he's going to go link away, he's going to make a splash mage. Alright, then the splash mage is going to bring back the circular, circular is going to go into the decoder. Alright, and then with these two monsters, he's gonna go into the Transpo Talker. And right here, I decide to activate my Terrifying Trap Hole. So now I'm gonna be able to target one of his monsters that's 2,000 attack or more. And I'm gonna be able to pop it. So now the Link Decoder is gonna come back, but now he's not gonna be able to do shit. So he's not gonna be able to link into anything. Because he's gonna need at least two Cyber monsters to go into anything. And the Nibiru is a rock. So I knew that that Transco Tarka was going to be the choke point. So I was just waiting for the best opportune moment to put an end to him. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, my people. So for our next replay, we're going to go up against the best deck in the game. We're talking about purely. And we're going second again, bro. Okay, so he's going to normal summon. Well, special summoning the Pearly. Searching for his My Friend Pearly. Activating the My Friend. Paying 500, getting, searching his delicious memory. Okay, then he's gonna activate the delicious memory. Targeting the pearly, special summoning the pearly. Okay, then the shadow squamata in the graveyard is gonna activate. Okay, so he's gonna send a hedgehog. And then he's gonna mill the, well, not mill, but look at the top cards of his deck. Then he's gonna draw one, he's gonna get the shadow beast. Okay, then with these two monsters, he's gonna go into the Anaconda, and this was like kind of interesting. But I'm guessing because he's playing the Shadow, he's gonna try to make a window. So this dude is really, really trying to be cringe. <laughs> so he's gonna go into the window, and he's gonna set three. So now I cannot special summon more than once. So we normal summon Putika. Trying to get my field spell, he's gonna hit me with the infinite of permanence. Alright, so now we're gonna go into our Sarah. And now because of the window, the window's gonna prevent me from activating my parallel exceed. So now I'm just gonna smack his anaconda and I'm gonna set two and pass. Alright, my friend Pearly's gonna activate again. He's gonna Okay, so he's gonna summon the uh, Pearly. That's gonna trigger my Torrental Tribute. So I'm gonna blow everything up. And here, I'm actually not quite sure. I missed that part. I'm not sure why the window was not destroyed. I'm guessing the way that he made the window is protecting her. So anyways, we special summon the Mermelo. So the Mermelo is gonna pop the My Friend Pearly. I'm gonna activate, I'm gonna set the chain hole. He's gonna get rid of my Sarah. He's gonna activate the Pearly Street. Activating the Pearly Memory, special summoning the Pearly. Then the Shadow Beast again is going to activate. I'm going to activate my Floodgate Trap Hole uh, so that I can put his Pearly face down so that he won't be able to exceed into anything. Alright, then he's going to get his Pearly Happy Memory. And because I flipped down his monster, he's not going to be able to go into like a plump or anything like that. 
He's gonna activate Maxi. We luckily we top deck our Ash Blossom, so we're gonna hit him with the Ash Blossom. But he's got the cross out designator, so <laughs> holy shit, man. Alright, so now we normal summon Putica. We finally are able to add our field spell, activate the field spell. Then with these two monsters, we're gonna go into the Pinguicula. Okay, and I go into the Pinguicula so that I can attack over the uh, window. So first, I'm gonna detach the Mermelo so that I can search for my Dianea. So now we get rid of his window. Now I can normal summon Dianea. Dianea is gonna be able to special summon the Mermelo from the graveyard. The Mermelo is gonna be able to pop his streets. And then now with the Dianea, we're gonna go into our Serra. All right, and then now I can activate Parallel Exceed. And we're on the max C, but at this moment, I'm like, I don't care, bro. I'm going to try to build as much advantage as I can. Okay, so now we're going to make Rafflesia for some extra protection. All right, and then I also peeped his graveyard. So his graveyard, he has... He has a Pearly, he has a Pearly, and he has another Pearlily. I don't know what, two Pearlilies and one Pearly. So I knew this is kind of bad for him, so that in order for him to activate his spell cards, he has to send like one of the pearly monsters to the graveyard. So now this is going to be like his second, his third pearly, because the other one I have a flip face down. So at this point, I know that he's out of pearly monsters. So at this point, I do feel like I have him beat. So I'm going to activate my Sarah, but he's got the call by the grave, so he's going to banish my Sarah so that he can negate the Sarah. But I feel confident, even though I took the Max C challenge, I feel confident because he has a whole bunch of Pearl Lily monsters in the graveyard, and then he has these two flip, flip face down. So he's not going to be able to go into none of his XZ monsters, so I completely blocked him from any future plays. Okay, so now we normal summon our Mantis. Mantis is going to search for Dianea. Okay, then with these two monsters, we're gonna go and make Hilario. Okay, then we normal summon Dianea. Dianea is gonna special summon the Mantis, I mean the Mermelo, but he's got the other call by the grave, so he's gonna banish my Mermelo. And I was gonna special summon the Mermelo so that I can pop his other friend Furley. Okay, and now with these two monsters, we're gonna go into our Atopis. Or Atopis. All right, then we're going to negate the My Friend Pearly, and we're going to pop it. And now we're going to clear his field. So we're going to smack that Pearly. Smack the other Pearly. Smack him for 2800. And then put an end to this puppy. But actually not, because he's got the freaking happy memory that's going to make... <laughs> it's going to cancel my attack, so he survives another turn. He's going to activate the pretty memory. We all going to get a thousand life points. He's going to activate another memory. But he cannot special summon none of his monsters because all of them are in the graveyard, bro. So he's just prolonging the inevitable right now. So we're going to try it one more time. He's going to activate the sleepy memory. So whatever, he's going to block that attack, but block this one. Yeah, I don't think so. And that's how you take down the best deck in the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for our next replay, we are going to go up against Mikankos. And, of course, in this Mikanko, they're going to make us go first. So we special summon Fenrir. Fenrir is going to search for our second Fenrir. I'm going to normal summon Mermelo. Mermelo is going to search for the Holotea. Then I'm going to link away into our Sarah. And this is typical, your typical trap trick kind of combo. Now I'm going to set Holotea. Holotea is going to be able to special summon itself by discarding a trap that we control from our hand. Then I'm going to special summon the Dianea so that I can recycle that trap card that I just milled. And then that's going to trigger the Sarah. So the Sarah is going to set the Floodgate Trap Hole. And then using the Holotea and the Dianea, I'm going to make Time Thief Redoer. And then I always make Time Thief Redoer whenever I have Holotea because the trap card is going to give the Time Thief Redoer the non-targeted spin back a card. Okay, so he's going to activate the Mikanko targeting my Sarah. Then he's going to activate the Nadia Servant, but I am going to Ash Blossom that. 
all right and then with these two monsters he's gonna go into the world chalice priestess and then here he kind of baited me i kind of fell for the bait because i spin back his card but i thought you know i just didn't want him to go into any crazy plays with that so now he's gonna activate the ohime ohime is gonna get the fire dance fire dance is gonna activate but i'm going to activate my holotea in the graveyard and i'm gonna special summon back the sarah Okay, the Fire Dance is going to get back to Hare. Hare is going to resurrect my Ash Blossom. He's going to search for the Water Arabesque. That's going to trigger my Fenrir, so I'm going to banish the Hare. Then he's going to activate the Arabesque, targeting my Sarah. He's going to special summon the Huli, spinning back my Sarah. Then he's going to crash into the Fenrir. Alright, then my Time Thief Redoer comes back. We draw into Grave Digger's Trap Hole. The Time Thief Redoer is going to steal his Axe of Fools. I'm going to normal summon Vesicolo. Vesicolo is going to go into the Sarah. Okay, then he's going to activate the Rivalry, targeting my uh, Sarah, getting the, uh, the Water Arabesque, but we are unaffected by trap cards. Alright, and then with the Sarah and the Pudica, we're going to go into our Calaria. Alright, then he's going to recycle the Water Arabesque. And then with all these monsters, we're going to go into our Underworld Goddess. Because I have no way of getting rid of the Arabesque. The Arabesque is going to make his cards untargetable. So I cannot target the Arabesque and I cannot target the monster that is equipped to. So I have to go into the Underworld Goddess so that I can clear his board. Then he's going to activate the Ohime. I'm going to activate my Gravedigger's Trap Hole. And the reason why I activate the Gravedigger's Trap Hole and not my Ash Blossom is because I know he has a Water of Arabesque in his hand. So now when he activates the Arabesque, I'm going to be able to Ash Blossom that. So that's going to prevent him from adding any cards to his um, hand. If I would have done it the other way around, if I would have Ash the Ohime, then he would have been able to use his Water of Arabesque and I would have been fucked. And now we smack him for Fen with Fenrir and put an end to him, bro. Trap trick, bro. This deck is delicious, man. Alright, my people. Welcome to uh, the next replay. I don't know what replay is this one, but we're going to go up against Punk. Okay, right off the bat, he's going to hit me with the Maxi. But we got the Draw and Lockbird. So Draw and Lockbird is also a great counter to the Maxi. Okay, so we're going to use our Mermelo, go into our Sarah. So he's going to draw a card off of that. So that's going to trigger my drawing Lockbird. So now his Maxi is cancelled. So I can special summon as much as I want and he, I don't need to worry about him drawing cards. Okay, so we special summon the Holotea. Once again, we're going to special summon the Dianea so that we can recycle the card that we pitched to the graveyard via the Holotea's effect. And then this time I'm going to make a Rafflesia instead of my Time Thief Redoer. Just because this time I don't have the Gravedigger's Trap Hole in my um, deck. So if he has Nibiru, like I won't be able to save myself. So I went into the Rafflesia just for extra protection. Alright, so now with the level 7 Elemental Hero and his level 3 Synchro, he's going to be able to, I mean with level 3 Zayami, he's going to make the Baroni de Flua. Baron is going to trigger my uh, Grave Digger's Trap Hole. That's going to activate my Terrifying Trap Hole. Then he's going to activate the Ghost Bell, but that's going to trigger my Grave Digger's Trap Hole. Then that's going to trigger the Baron the Floor to try to negate my Grave Digger's Trap Hole. But that's also going to trigger my Rafflesia to send a Chain Hole Trap to the Graveyard. All of this to stop a Baron the Floor, bro. But it worked in our favor because <laughs> we banished the Shadow Kuzai from his hand. And this is a very crucial card in a punk deck. And he knows it. He says, screw that shit, I'm out of here. Trap tricks are too much for him. But I just thought this was a crazy little interaction, a little back and forth just to stop a Baron the Floor, bro. But it worked in our flavor. In our, in our flavor. In All our right, my people. Welcome back. For our next replay, we're going to go up against Cash Thera. And we finally get to go first, bro, after all those replay of having to go second. <laughs> so we're going to normal summon our Mantis. He's going to hit me with the Ash Blossom. I mean, with the uh, Maxi. I'm going to negate with the Ash Blossom. Okay, the Mantis is now going to search me for my Mermelo. 
Then I'm gonna activate the field spell. Then I'm gonna link into Sarah. So now the field spell is gonna allow me to do two normal summons in one turn. But first, I'm gonna activate the parallel exceed. All right, and then with these two monsters, we're gonna go into our Replacia. All right, and then the Replacia right here, if he had like Nibiru this time, the Replacia would have been able to protect me because I will be able to discard a monster and activate the Grave Digger's Trap Hole from my deck. Okay, so now we activate Holotea, discarding a trap card, special summoning itself, special summoning Dianea so that Dianea can recycle the card that we just sent to the graveyard. And once again, since I have my Holotea on the field, I'm going to make Time Thief with Doer. And this is kind of like an amazing turn one board that you always want to try to make with this deck. Because we have Rafflesia that is going to protect your Trap Tricks monsters from being targeted and anything. Also, the Rafflesia can send any trap card that we have from the deck to the graveyard as counter. Then we got the Time Thief Redoer that has the Holotea's material, which is going to give it non-target and spin back. And then we got the Sarah that's unaffected by trap cards. We got Floodgate Trap Hole to flip down any monster that is a special summon or normal summon. And then on top of that, we also got the Maxi. So this is like amazing turn one board that you want to make. Alright, so he special summoned the Fenrir, so we're going to flip that shit face down. That's going to trigger the Mermelo. I mean, trigger my Sarah to special summon the Mermelo. Mermelo is going to pop the birth. And then I'm going to set a Chain Hole. Then he's going to normal summon some side frame bullshit. Then he's got another birth, so the birth is going to get back the Fenrir. And this is what I mean. The Fenrir activated, so now with the Rafflesia, I was able to send the Terrifying Trap Hole. So I can negate the, well not negate, but I can pop the Fenrir, and then I can banish the Fenrir as well. Alright, and then with the Time Thief Redoer, I spin back the Birth, because the Birth can be troublesome, you know, since we banish the Fenrir, the Birth will be able to bring it back. Alright, then with the Time Thief Redoer, we steal his Birth. I'm gonna banish the Holotea so that I can special summon Mermelo. Okay, that's gonna trigger the Sarah, so it's gonna set a Holotea. Then with these two monsters, we're going to go into our Pinguicula. Okay, then we normal summon Arachnocampo. Then with Arachnocampo, we're going to make our Malevolent Sin. And this monster I know is not very common. I know a lot of Trap Tricks players don't usually use this card right here. But this card right now is going to allow me to detach one card and then I can banish one of his monsters. And what's going to happen now is that when we have Pinguicula on the field, whenever a monster gets banished, we can suck it up. Okay, so now the Pinguicula is going to be able to suck up that monster. And then now we can lethal this fool. And that's how you do it. Roll to master, baby. We got this. We got this on lock. Alright, boys and girls. For our next replay, we are going to go up against another Labyrinth fool. Okay, and then this time we're going to go first. Okay, so we normal summon Mermelo. Mermelo is going to search for our Holotea. Then with Mermelo, we're going to link summon into our Sarah. Then we're going to set Holotea. And because we have a Grave Digger's Trap Hole, well, our Trap Hole in our hand, we can activate Holotea. So we're going to pitch the Trap Hole into the graveyard. We can special summon Holotea. That's going to trigger the Sarah to special summon Dianea. Dianea is going to be able to recycle the card that we just sent to the graveyard. That's going to trigger the Sarah, so we can go and set a Floodgate Trap Hole. And then with these two monsters, we're going to make Rafflesia. So now we just have some protection. So here is, usually I make a Time Thief Redoer, but you can kind of, you know, play around, see what you like to do best. So here he's got the Ku Clock, so I'm going to right off the back negate the Ku Clock, because that's going to allow him to set a Trap Card and activate it on the same turn. So right here, he sets the um, Big Welcome Labyrinth. Okay, then the Ku Clock is going to be able to send itself back to the hand. That's going to trigger the Sarah since I activated the Trap card. I can special summon Mermelo, so now the Mermelo is going to be able to pop that card that he just set. But unfortunately for us, he has the Call by the Grave, so he's going to be able to banish the Mermelo and negate my Mermelo from popping.
All right, and then we set another Holotea. So now he sets three, and that's all he wrote. All right, then he's going to activate the big Welcome Labyrinth. I'm going to activate Holotea. Okay, so special summoning the Holotea. He's going to special summon the lovely Labyrinth. Okay, he's going to spin back the Cool Clock. That's going to trigger my Sarah. That's going to trigger the lovely. And then that's going to trigger the Chandelier. And then he's also going to have another Eradicator Virus, bro. Bro, all the trap, all the Labyrinth players that I play against, bro, they all just happen to have that freaking Eradicator Epidemic Virus, bro. <laughs> and he's going to pop my Mantis. Okay, so we special summon our Vesiclo. Okay, and then with these three monsters, we're going to go into our Oedipus. All right. Then we're going to normal summon Dianea. Dianea is going to special summon back my Mantis. That's going to trigger the Sarah. I'm going to set a Floodgate Trap Hole. Then I'm going to activate the Traptalizing Tune, discarding my uh, Mermelo so that I can draw two cards. So we draw into Maxi and Ash Blossom. So not very bad. Not a bad, bad trade off. Okay, so now we're going to go into Calaria. And then now we can smack him. Smack him. And put an end to him. Bro, both Labyrinth players were able to hit me with the Eradicator Virus, but we were still able to play through that shit, bro. Because Trap Tricks is fucking amazing. Alright, my people. So for our last replay, we're going to go up against a Pendulum deck. It's like a Metal Foes. This is my first time that I play against this deck, so I really didn't know what the heck was going on. I wasn't sure how to counter this deck. But I really wanted to showcase it because it's something new, you know. I, I don't know how many people actually encounter this deck while climbing up the ladder. So, you know, shout out to my opponent for playing something that's completely new and different. So I'm going to fast forward this a little bit because I cannot even explain what the heck is going on because I wasn't uncertain. But he's going to be doing a whole bunch of link climbing. So he's going to go into the Pig Knight. Okay, now he's going to go into the Prometheus Princess. Then he's going to bring back the Pig Knight. Alright, then he's just going to do a bunch of Pendulum shenanigans. Now he's going to Fusion Summon into the Metal Foes Mysterium. Alright, then that's going to activate. He's going to bring put back two cards. And then, I don't know, so that he can put back the uh, Pendulum card in the Pendulum Zone. Okay, now with these two monsters, he's going to go into the Amphibious Swarm Ship and Blow Whale. And then that's all he wrote. Okay, then the Pig Knight is going to bring itself back onto the field. So he has the Prometheus Girl in the Graveyard that can activate whenever I Special Summon. And I do that exact same thing because I wanted to pretty much bait out the Prometheus. So that when I go into my Trap Tricks plays, he cannot disrupt me. So I kind of had to sacrifice the Fenrir for that, but it's all good. So the Mermelo is going to search for my Holotea. Now we can go into our Sarah. And since I have a Trap Hole card in my deck, I can set the Holotea and activate it right away. Alright, then we're going to special summon Dianea. Dianea is going to recycle that Floodgate Trap Hole that we just sent to the graveyard. Then the, tra the Sarah is going to activate. I'm going to set the um, Grave Digger Trap Hole into my field. And then I'm going to go into Rafflesia. And then unfortunately for us, we don't have enough damage to attack over any of his monsters. So we just set some cards and pass turn. Okay, then the Prometheus Princess is going to bring back a monster. That's going to trigger my mine. So using my, life, my mine, I'm going to blow up his whole entire field. But before I blow everything up, he's going to go and fusion summon into some monster, which I don't even know. <laughs> Alright, so now apparently when his monsters gets destroyed and sent to the graveyard, that's going to activate a whole bunch of shit. Then he's going to hit me with the Max C. Okay, so I special summon my Mermelo. So the Mermelo is going to be able to pop one of his um, Pendulum Zone monsters. Then he's going to bring back the Promethean Princess. Okay, then that's going to trigger his monster. That's going to trigger my Rafflesia. So I send the chain hole, trap hole, 
trap card to my graveyard so that I can negate his monster. And then that's also going to make him banish a card, so we banish the Ash Blossom from his hand. Okay, then the Sarah is going to activate. We're going to set our Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. Alright, then he's going to pop his Promethean Princess, which makes sense. You want that card in the graveyard so that I can activate on my turn. Then he's going to activate the Amphibian Swarm Ship, but I have my Grave Digger's Trap Hole, so I'm going to negate that. Burn for 2,000. Then he's going to activate another Metal Falls Fusion. And he's going to make another Metal Falls Methurium. Alright, then that's going to trigger the whatever Trap Card he had in the graveyard. I'm not quite sure what's going on, to be honest. Like I said, I had to kind of learn this deck as I was dueling against it, because... It is the first time in my life that I go up against this deck. Alright, so now we banish Holotea, special summoning the Dianea. The Dianea is not going to be able to recycle one of my trap cards from my graveyard. So we recycle the Chain Hole. Alright, then that's going to trigger his Promethea Princess, pop in my Dianea, which I'm cool. I just wanted to get my trap card back onto the field. Okay, we're drawing to evenly matched. So we normal summon our Mantis, getting our Arachna Kempa. That's gonna trigger the Sarah. Sarah's gonna set another Holotail. Then we're using these two monsters. We're gonna go into our Pinguicula. Okay, now I activate Vesicolo, sending the evenly matched to the graveyard so I can special summon itself. And then the Arachna Kempa can special summon itself since I have a Traffic monster in my field. Then we're gonna make the Malevolent Sin. Targeting the Promethean Princess, banishing it, so the Pinguicula is going to be able to suck it up. Okay, then we activate the Pinguicula so that we can search for the Pudica. Okay, so now we crash into this monster. The Malevolent Sin is going to activate, getting itself a, an attack boost, and he's going to call it quits. Maybe it's too much for him. But shout out to the opponent, bro. Like, using a deck that's not very popular, you know, you love to see it. Alright, let's jump right into the deck list. All right, my beautiful people, let's jump right into the deck list. So we are running two draw and lockbird. This card right here has been amazing against Maxi and a lot of decks like Pearly and Kashtira and just about almost every deck like draw and lockbird is actually a really good card right now in this format. And then you already know my goddess. We got one Karikara great set going second card to board break. Then we got two Maxis for Maxi purposes. We have two Ash Blossoms. Then we have three Mermelio. So Mermelio, when it's normal summon, you can add one whole normal trap from your deck to your hand. And when it is special summon, you can target one spell or trap card your opponent controls and you destroy that shit. And then we have two Dianea. Dianea is really important in your starting combos because when this card is normal summoned, you can target a trap trick monster in your graveyard and then you can special summon it in defense position. But when this card is special summoned, you can target one whole card in your graveyard and then you can set it, but you have to banish it during the end phase of your next turn, so you have to keep that in mind. Then we run three Mantis. Mantis is going to add a Trap Tricks monster from your deck to your hand. And when it is special summoned, you can target a set spell or trap card that you control and then you can return it to the hand and then you can set it back again. So sometimes you can use this monster to send back the card that you god with dianea and then you can replace it so that it doesn't get banished and then we have one vesicolo vesicolo's uh, special effect comes out every now and then where you can send one set trap card you control to the graveyard and then you can special summon this card from your hand and then also if you have no cards in your spell and trap zone you can banish this card from your graveyard and then you can target one whole normal trap you can in your graveyard and then you can set it to your field so it's a great card to recycle your resources when you're running out of them. And then we have three Pudica. Pudica, when it's normal summoned, is going to search you for your field spells. And then when it is special summoned, you can target an opponent, a monster that your opponent controls. And then you can banish it. But the downside to this card is that during the next standby phase, your opponent can special summon one of their banished monsters. So you have to keep that in mind. So usually I use this banishing effect whenever I have... Pinguicula on the field because whatever card gets banished Pinguicula is going to be able to suck it up and that way your opponent doesn't have the ability to special summon any of his banished monsters back onto the field 
and then we have two Arachnocampa. So Arachnocampa can special summon herself as long as you control a Trap Tricks monster. But when you do it, you're going to lock yourself into plant and insect monsters only. And then its second effect is that while it is face up on the field, your uh, set spell and trap cards that you control are unaffected by like harpies feather dusters and stuff like that. So it's going to protect your back row. So that's why we run two of them. Then we have two Fenrir, Fenrir, two Fenrir because it's a great going second card. And one of the downsides to this deck is that it can really, really struggle a lot going second. So you really have to balance your going second cards and all of that. So that's why we run two Fenrir. And then we have two Parallel Exceed. Parallel Exceed, you know, when you link into Sarah, you're going to be able to special summon this card. And it's going to allow you to make any of your level four um, XZ monsters. So you can make Rafflesia or you can make Baguska or Time Thief Redoer. So any of your level fours that you need. All right, and then we have one Harpy's Feather Duster to get rid of back row. We have one of our field spell. So this card right here is going to protect your uh, insect and plant monsters that will be destroyed by battle. The first time, they are not destroyed. So they have to attack onto that same monster twice in order to destroy it. And then you can also normal summon twice with this card. And then its last effect is that you can banish one monster you control. And you can special summon one Trap Tricks monster from your hand or graveyard. So very, very useful field spell. And then for our trap cards, during my climb, um, I switched some of these cards around. So I'll go over real quick. But I was running two Torrental Tribute, but I cut it down to one. And this card is amazing because all of, all of your tra um, Trap Tricks extra deck monsters are unaffected by trap cards as long as they have material. So this card right here, whenever you activate it, it's going to just Raigeki your opponent's field instead of yours. And then I started using this one right here. Whenever your opponent special summons a monster from the hand or extra deck, you can shuffle those monsters into the deck. And then you just got to burn for a thousand damage. So sometimes like against pendulum decks, this card is really great because if they pendulum summons three or four monsters, you can shuffle all that shit back into the deck. So it's a really, really great because it's also non-targeting. So that's why I kind of play around with it. But um, one card that I was running instead of this one that I was going back and forth with is the Terrifying Trap Hole. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up very quickly. Uh, this card right here, the Trap Hole Nightmare. So when a monster that was special summoned this turn activates its effect, you can negate the effect. And if you do, you can destroy that card. So I was going back and forth between this one and this one. So you can kind of play around and see what do you like best. Um, but yeah, other than that, we are running a Floodgate Trap Hole. I was also running two of these and I cut it down to one. But this is one of the best Trap Holes because whenever your opponent normal summons or special summons a monster, you can flip it face down and it stays like that forever. And then we have another going second card, which is too evenly matched. This is also target for the Vesiculo. If I realize I don't need the uh, evenly matched, then I can set it to the field and then I can send it to the graveyard with Vesiculo. So I can special summon Vesiculo. And then we run two infinite impermanence. We run one chain hole. Uh, so this card is really, really amazing. When your opponent activates a monster effect in response to a card or effect activation, you can negate that opponent's effect, then your opponent can banish one card from their hand or deck with the same original, na original name as the negated card. And if they did not, then you can banish one random card from their hand. So this card is really, really amazing against like Math Mech, against Labyrinth and stuff like that. That whatever deck that does not like having their cards banished, which is just about almost every deck besides Castero. And then we have one Grave Diggers Trap Hole. This card, sometimes I also run it at two because this is what's going to protect you against Nibiru whenever you have Rafflesia on the field. And then we have one Terrifying Trap Hole Nightmare. If your opponent special summons a monster this turn, then you can target one monster your opponent controls with 2,000 or more attack. Then you can destroy it. And then if you have a whole normal trap in your graveyard, you can banish one monster from your opponent's graveyard. So, yep, really, really great counter. And then we have Holotea's really, really versatile card, really, really essential for the deck. And then for our trap, for our extra deck, we have two Rafflesia. So Rafflesia is going to protect your um, Trap Tricks monsters because they cannot target them with um, card effects 
except for Rafflesia. And then also once per turn when you're you can detach one material from this card and then you can send one whole normal trap that meets the activation whenever your opponent activates a monster. So if your opponent activates like Nibiru stuff like that you can detach one material and then you can send the Gravedigger's Trap Hole from your deck to the graveyard and you can protect yourself from Nibiru. And then the Malevolous Sand I run this card because first of all it's 2400 so it's really great. And then whenever it attacks, it's going to be able to gain 300 attack. And also, it can detach one material and then you can banish one card that your opponent controls. And similar to Puttika, it's just going to be able to... Your opponent is going to be able to special summon it back at the end of the next standby phase. So you have to keep that in mind. I know a lot of Trap Chicks players don't really play this card a whole lot. But for me, it, it really has saved me a couple games. And then Baguska, Baguska... I didn't make this card a whole lot during my climb, so sometimes I thought about, you know, cutting it, but mostly I have it so that I can go into like a Zeus play. And then Time Thief Redoer, this card is like amazing, a really, really amazing. Then we have one Alamaris, one Pinguicula, one Zeus. Then we got the best card, three Zeras. You really need to have three in the deck. Then we have one Osa. Osa is there to steal like a Fenrir from your opponent's graveyard. And then we have Calaria, and then we have Aedipus. Aedipus is going to be like your finisher in the deck. And then we have one Underworld Goddess. So that is it, guys. Like I said, I'm going to try my best to get into Masters with this deck before the uh, month is over. I know I only have maybe like one day left, but I hope you guys enjoyed the replays. And if you did, consider dropping a like. And subscribing to the channel it would really really help me out i'm almost well not almost to a thousand subs but i'm getting there i'm at currently at 800 and if i can get to a thousand like i would really 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 appreciate that so thank you for any love and support that you guys can show to the channel i really really appreciate it thank you for sticking out with me continue enjoying the rest of your day morning evening afternoon wherever you may find yourself in the world kiwami games peace out.